Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and I'm here to bring you another live paper crafting class. It is Wednesday, August 18th at 11 a.m. Central Time as I'm broadcasting to you live. It's always fun to read the comments before the live begins. You can actually log in and um, comment beforehand. So thank you to everybody who chimed in. I, I got on there about a half hour early and, and sent a little message to a few people, but it's, it's fun to see familiar names pop up again. So it's good to see you, Naomi and Kathy. And thank you so much. Hi, Bonnie. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So we are going to do something 3D today. Um, this project was inspired by um, the tombstone boxes, which you wouldn't think of for something that um, I'm going to do with it. But the, these tombstone boxes are a new uh, 3D object that's in the mini catalog. And I did some cutting and trimming and I'm like, this doesn't have to be Halloween related. So we're going to make a little mini album coming out of a box. Um, you may have seen these kinds of projects before, but it's always fun to see someone else's take on something. I always get inspiration when I look other places. I may have seen that fold before, but look at what that person did. Or I may have seen that technique before, but look at what that person did. So I'm constantly getting inspiration from you. Um, I love the comments that you sent in to me during the live or after the live. I do have um, little screenshots of some of those comments from last time. So I'm going to pull those up soon. But for those of you that are new, a big welcome to you. And if you're new, you want to log into your YouTube slash Google account so that you can participate in the live commenting. I love to hear where you're from. I love to hear if you're new. I love to hear um, your stamping um, tips and how long you've been a crafter, what you might be working on right now, what the weather's like where you're at. It's really fun to see all of those comments. Um, and so on that note, we have a moderator. So we have a special person who's in the comment section. Um, her name is Trisha Josephs. She's my moderator each and every week, pretty much. And so she has a little wrench symbol next to her name. You'll see her, she's gonna like be um, a little bit darker than the other names. You'll see her stand out. And if you want to ask a question or um, need something, you know, responded to or whatever, just tag her by uh, writing the at sign. So the A with the circle around it and then start writing her name, T-R-I-C-I-A. It'll pop up on your screen. You can click on that name and that way she will get tagged and she'll be able to see your question or your comment. So thank you, Trisha. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have prize drawings too, so the the comments do get you entered into a prize drawing. We do those prizes at the end. Um, and I am going to share some supplies and measurements before we, we begin the project. But first, let's go to last week's comments. I'm going to bring those up here and switch my computer, my screen. There we go. Oh, and I might have to, I might have to shrink my head. <laughs> let's see if we can do that. Hang on. Uh, still going to be in the way. Well, you know what? You'll be able to read a little bit more and then I'll just scroll. How does that sound? So on the left hand side, we have um, comments from people who are chiming in from where they're at. If they're new, love that. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, just some kind comments. Now at the end there, you can see Lori and Jonah, uh, Jana, I think is how you say her name. Um, you were both saying um, some nice comments about me and that you learn from me. I learned from you too. So up at the very top on the right, <laughs> why did I not think of this? And I may have heard this in years past, I don't know. But a lot of you were telling me, put some nail polish over the word score on your scoring blade and then it won't rub off. <laughs> so um, I have a trimmer and on my trimmer, there is the light blade and the dark blade and the light blade is the one that scores and you don't have to replace that that blade and so i just write the word score on it and i used to do that when i had classes because i um, didn't want people to mess up on their projects in case they were using my trimmer for scoring or whatever and so i write that on there but with a sharpie marker even the sharpie marker eventually rubs off because you're putting your pressure on there so um thank you to more than just four of you i think i have four comments up there um, I really appreciate that. So this morning I took and rewrote the word score on my two cutting blades on my two trimmers and I put some clear nail polish over the top and um, yes, hopefully that will not rub off now. 
And then um, the Cove Crafter, Amy, and a couple of others were commenting on different acorn products that are out there, whether they're current or retired. And me personally, I like to use the actual images that coordinate with that stamp set. Um, Amy, your acorn idea was great. It's in a current stamp set, but it just didn't have the same, same style of art in it. So, um, but yes, for anybody who's interested in that, Amy, thank you for that comment for the extra acorn. And then we do have a retired acorn punch. Some of you may still have that on hand. Um, in fact, one of you emailed directly and said that you could punch out that acorn with that punch. It wasn't exact, but it was pretty close. And then somebody was talking about acorn embellishments. And I forgot to mention that my friend Joanne Peterson made me cute little acorn earrings um, about a year ago, I think. And I was wearing those and I forgot to highlight, you know, point those out to her. Um, what else do I want to mention? Oh, the squirrels. Oh my gosh. It's a love hate relationship with squirrels. <laughs> you guys either love squirrels or you don't like squirrels. Um, oh, I forgot to scroll up, didn't I? Hang on. Let's see if I can do that. Let's go back. There you go. Now you can see the last couple of comments. Um, <laughs> because the last one's really funny. So Diana's going to make that card and give it to her brother-in-law. And then um, Tina, I love that. So, so sweet. All right, we are ready to roll on to our next project. So today's project, again, is a mini album in a box. I'm going to be using some um, products from the Beauty of Tomorrow. Uh, well, Beauty, what is it called? Blackberry Beauty Suite. Sorry, that's, there we go. If I put it on the side, it's not so bright. I'm not closing my window again. Like last week, you guys said the lighting was just fine, but now that I'm holding that stamp set up, it doesn't look right. I'm gonna move to my desktop real quick here. Make my head a little bit bigger, if I can. Oh, I'm dancing. You guys can't see this, but I'm all over the place on my other screen. There, we're back to having a normal size picture down there. <laughs> These are the acorn earrings, by the way, up close. Super cute. Thank you, Joanne. And this is the stamp set that I'm going to use. It comes from the suite called Blackberry Beauty. And you can see the two-page spread here. It's on pages 44 and 45 of the mini catalog. Um, lots of beautiful um, colors and imagery. Um, so here's the stamp set. It does coordinate with a set of dies. And I brought this little celebration brochure in because that particular bundle of products is a free pick if you get the starter kit this month or next month. It's one of the 12 picks, this bundle. I'm not going to use the dies today, um, but I am using the stamp set. And then I'm using some fun free paper. This is a celebration free pick with a $50 purchase. This is called Beautifully Penned. And so I'm going to be using that with the project. So on that note, let's go to the supplies, okay? Let's pull that up and go over to the computer screen again. There we go. You can take a screenshot if you'd like to, but you don't need to because in the description of this video, you will find a link to my blog. My blog post will go live, uh, gosh, in about an hour at 12.15 Central Time. And then you'll be able to click on that link and you'll be able to click on the PDF and print this actual sheet off so you can have that with you. You can take a screenshot though if you wish. Also in the description of the video there is a list of supplies so the items that are on the left hand side over here those are listed in the description of the video right now. You, you can see those. Um, so you can see tombstone boxes at the top. I know Halloween right? Um, we're using the Beauty of Tomorrow Kling stamp set. A good man Kling stamp set just because I wanted to make this particular mini album um, related to dads, um, kind of a little gift to dad. The beautifully penned designer paper, black and white and gray. There's not a lot of color in here, so I'd recommend that when you make this mini album, you add color photos to it, um, which I think are easier to get a hold of than black and white anyways, right? I think the black and white background will really show off color photos well. And then um, what else do I have on there? Just some basic tools. You'll notice at the very end that I did write some tools in there that I typically don't write in there, like the um, clear blocks. I listed clear blocks. I listed the stamp and scrub and mist, um, floral grid paper. I brought the floral grid paper in um, because I wanted to add some color to the table. These are the two stamp sets that I'm highlighting again, Beauty of Tomorrow and A Good Man. 
you can see the images there. It's fun because there's a daughter and dad, there's a son and dad, and then there's just dad relaxing. Um, this stamp has been around a couple years, I believe. So here we go. Let me show you first the tombstone boxes, okay? So the tombstone boxes come in a packet of eight. You get eight of them and they're stacked like this, the tops and the bottoms, but you'll notice, and you can kind of see it here on this open package here, that some of the box pieces are narrower or smaller than the others. And now if I stack these two, let's stack them this way. If you stack these two on top of each other, you can see there's a difference. So the bottom one is smaller than the top one, which makes sense because when you put together a box, the cover is slightly larger than the bottom on a typical box. So the way you put them together is you just bring up the top, um, two sides and the other two sides, so the four sides. These are little tabs that go in like that. Everything's gonna curve inward like this, okay? And you'll do the same thing to the top and the bottom. This is the bottom one. So then when you bring these two sides in, you're gonna have the tabs come in first. You see this, it says 3M on it. That means it's adhesive. <laughs> 3M is very big on adhesive. Um, so you're gonna bring these tabs in like that and then you're gonna bring this one up and in. It's super simple, right? And then you just go like that and you've got that connected. Do the same thing to the other side. Now before we do any um, assembly to the top box piece, I'm gonna tell you a little tip that a lot of people are doing. Um, see how it's flat? <laughs> okay, hang on. This is not listed as a supply. It's my stamp and cut and emboss machine. But if you have a machine like this, you can put your platform um, number one down, your die adapter number two, your scratchy mat, and I forgot to replace my top one with a cleaner one, sorry. But then you can take your top of your box and you can place that onto, and I'm gonna grab a sticky note here. You can place that onto, see how it fits? We can grab any kind of window die, so a framelit of any sort. I mean, you could do other things too. You could die cut into this, basically. So we're gonna line this up, and we want it to be center on the front. Don't worry so much about the back, but you also don't wanna have your die be larger than these edges here okay so you kind of have to eyeball the back but center from the front so now we're going to take and place the sandwich top on top and crank it on through Ugh. <laughs> it's thicker than just regular cardstock but it works and now after you've done that you have oh gosh i guess i have to die cut that maybe backwards let's do it upside down that'll work it always die cuts a little deeper if it's placed upside down I should have done that in the beginning you know what I didn't even die cut this yet I've just been seeing people do it I might have to shim it you know what shimming is it's adding an extra piece of cardstock underneath the cutting mat because I'm not sure I should have watched the videos <laughs> Well, anyways, oh, now it's working. It's working somewhat. So you're gonna take and pop that out. There, yay, I did it! Rachel, ta-da! So then you can take that and you can put like a window sheet or vellum here or just leave it open, but it will show off whatever is inside your box. Cool, right? All right, so that's one little tip I wanted to give you. Assembling and that fun little die cutting tip. Let's put these things back here. Oh, <laughs> my grid paper. My grid paper is stuck to the bottom of my, I must have something sticky on there. Shoot. <laughs> I like having my grid paper look nice. Okay, next. Um, so here's the basic box. <laughs> this is the basic box decorated. And I used the, got to show you that one now. I used the cute, uh, cute, the cute Halloween suite of products, which is the stamp set, the punch, the tombstone boxes, 
the fun little star stickers, the ribbon, and some paper. And I made this little guy. So, real easy. I added some rhinestones there. I colored the paper with blends markers. So I had some blends in there. Um, this is one of our fun punches, just a label punch. These little guys are from the paper also. Punch them out with the coordinating punch. So this punch actually punches out stamp set images and images from the paper. Here's that stamp set. Here are the star stickers. So if you're a fan of these tombstone boxes, you may want to just invest in all of it. So these are, I think I, the, la the top stack here is all the paper. So these guys unfortunately don't punch out. I love the skeleton the most, <laughs> but those guys will. And a few of the little ghosts will. So those are the colorful sides of the paper. Cute bats too. And then these are the black and white sides. And what I did again with the candy is I colored it in with my blends markers. So you can take and add color to any of these images. And I took this one next along with this one and I made another box and I want to show you that one. So we're doing tombstone box variations also today, okay? Just showing you some tips and ideas because these I'm going to feature on my blog in two days and you'll be able to um, get the supply lists for those in a couple days but I'm giving you the tips for them now so I'm, there's not going to be written out directions for those items in fact let me bring this back real quick yeah no you don't need any more tips on that okay <laughs> this box is open from the top okay so it doesn't open this way I assembled it so that it actually sits like a tombstone, right? Okay, so here's the tombstone. <laughs> here's the land underneath. It stands up like a tombstone, like a tombstone should. So I colored the ribbon and tied a little knot here and stuck it on. This punch again, hang on. I'll bring it out so you can see it. The same punch, used it on this box, stamped with pumpkin pie ink because that's the color here. Punched out the fun little ghost this time. And there you can see the layers of designer paper there. So, okay, so you ready? This is how you do that. So for the tombstone box, you'll want to cut away some portions of the box. So let's look at uh, box pieces that are not cut yet. So here's the box base. And you can see, oh here, we'll put them right side up. So you can see here on the top of the box, I've angle cut this piece and cut away the sticky portion. So I cut this whole section away and then I angle cut the sides. On the bottom of the box, I cut just the st strip of adhesive. So I left a tab there and then I angle cut that to make it insert into the bottom. And then on the top, this is the top box piece. Make sure they're angled the right way. So for the top, I cut away quite a lot, okay? So you can see I cut the same section away, angle cut again, but this time I cut off the two tabs. And then on the bottom, I cut across the whole section there. So when you put this together, you're gonna Push, put this down with some adhesive. In fact, let's just grab some of our Seal Plus adhesive. That's going to go like that. Then this one is going to go like that. I probably should have put it on the tab. <laughs> I should zoom in a bit here too. All right. And then these two, I think... Make sure I do that right. We're gonna wait. I think I put those down. Wrong box. Nope, okay. But you could take and wait until they're assembled and then put the tabs down. I think I put them down beforehand. Let's just do that. Let's put them down beforehand. Less bulk. So those go down. So all the top tabs go down and that just gives it a nicer finish on the top. 
And then the bottom of the box, these tabs come in. This gets, this is just a closure along the bottom. But we have to connect the sides. This is the outside because it's a slightly larger box. So the outside edges are going to get adhesive. And then you're going to connect it like this. So you're going to look at the bottom. You're going to look at the bottom of the boxes right here, the tombstone portion, and you're going to connect together. I'll hold it up a little higher here. Okay, I'm just going to peek. Yep, okay, so you can see the lining up of the bottom edges here. So they're connecting together there and this one will be easier there and that way these things are going to be level on your table the bottom edges and then you just close it like that and if you want to you can add adhesive in there but you just close it up and you have a standing box so fun here's one other project that I'll share on my blog. This is one of those um, tower pinwheel pinwheel tower cards. Um, hey, boo, trick or treat, and then a place to sign. So you've seen me demonstrate this before. This is just another version. Um, so that will be on my blog also, so you can take a peek at photos of that finished project. So some fun Halloween stuff ahead, but for now, we're not gonna do Halloween. We're going to instead take this box and we're going to do some trimming. And I'm going to grab my long scissors, my long bladed scissors. We're just going to move those out of the way and we're going to trim straight across. It's a little bit harder to do with paper snips, but we're trimming off the top of the tombstone. We'll do that on this side too. Trim right across the top. that and then on the, the sides you have these little guys here sticking out so we're just going to move these out of the way and you want to do this before you assemble I think it's a lot easier to get in there so then we'll just trim like that like that okay next you figure out which is the top and which is the bottom again bigger ones the top so we're going to grab that one, and at this point, it really doesn't matter um, what is the top or bottom, you know what I mean, because they're the same. So you decide whatever you want. And we're going to do some stamping. So I'm going to bring in our stamps from Beauty of Tomorrow. We're going to use this one here to stamp right on the front, and I'm going to use the basic gray ink. So our basic gray is the color that you see here. I love the um, roughed up look here, kind of distressed look. So when we do this, we want to actually have another piece of scrap paper. Um, and grab something that's kind of messed up on the other side. And we're just gonna stick that underneath there. That way, any stamping that I do um, coming off the bottom is not gonna get onto the sides of the box, because you'll see that. So just tuck that underneath like that and then ink up your stamp. Make sure it's fully inked and then we're going to stamp it down. We're going to put one coming right up through the middle like that. And then <laughs> I need a little bit more on this side. We're going to do another one off to the side. Now this is a slightly coated surface, so it's gonna take a little bit longer for that to dry, so that's why we're stamping this first. We're gonna stamp that one there, and then we'll stamp another one on the opposite side. And you see what would happen to the sides of our box if we didn't have this paper tucked under here? Okay, so this one goes over here. And again, we'll set that aside to dry. We're going to stamp a couple other pieces. I mentioned that you needed a half inch um, strip by, I think it was like one and a quarter. 
Um, so I've got a half inch strip here and it doesn't matter if it's extra long. We're just going to go ahead and stamp the words for you on there right now. My catch all table is already super, super filled. <laughs> so I have the for you that comes from the, um, a good, a good man stamp set. Put that one out so you can see it again. There's the, the for you is at the bottom here. Can you see that? There it is. So we're going to stamp that. And we're going to stamp that kind of to the left, right about there. And right, I did not put labels on that stamp. Sometimes I just go fast. We'll grab our snips and we'll trim kind of at an angle like that. There's our, our title for our album. Um, I'm going to show you the finished album here soon. I haven't showed you that yet, have I? I will show you that. And then we're going to bring in the designer paper. So I think it's time. Actually, you know what? Let's stamp a couple more pieces. I'm going to stamp a few more pieces and then I'm going to bring in the finished album. So now we have some white pieces and these four white ones are going to get some imagery and then we can put the ink away and not worry about it um, kind of getting all over the place. So for one of them, it's going to be like the first page of the album. You could take and stamp this little guy in there or this one. I'm going to stamp the one with the dad and daughter. And we're not going to get that whole image in that piece because this is a very tall stamp. In fact, I'm going to put at the very top the sentiment, you're the best. That also comes from this set and it's right there. So we're going to stamp that one at the top. Again, this will be like the first page of the album. And then this one will come in right underneath. Like that. So cute. Okay, and then um, another image that we're going to have comes from the Blackberry Beauty set. And that's this image. And we'll do that on our next piece. Oh, I'm trying to move that away. <laughs> That's going to go right like that. And then we need um, this image again. And we're going to stamp that onto one of the smaller white pieces. And then our last image is a combination, once again, from our A Good Man stamp set. It's the one that says, I grew up loved. And then the bird. So I think we'll do the bird at the top, coming down like that, and then this one, again, labels are missing. We'll stamp that one down here. So now we have all the stamping done. I'm going to put all of this ink and inked up stuff away. Actually, I mentioned the scrub. Let's do some cleaning. Let me bring in that scrub and mist. So the scrub and mist, awesome tool. Um, if you do not have a cleanup tool for your stamps, I recommend this. It's, it's um, one of the least messy ways to clean your stamps. <laughs> we do have um, a chamois, but I, for some reason, just I have issues with getting my hands dirty. So I just spritz the stamp and mist onto one side of my stamp and scrub. I stamp off to lighten the ink a bit, and then I clean. And there is, there's a second side, and that, that's to dry. So, but sometimes I don't dry. <laughs> so I clean, and then I dry. Okay. Do that again with this one. Clean and dry. So easy, right? So those of you that are beginning crafters, it's a super quick way of cleaning up those stamps and getting them out of your way. And I didn't get any ink on my fingers. <laughs> oh, I forgot a stamp. We'll just set that one there. Okay, next, assembling of the album. Okay, let's show you the finished. We'll move this because it's messy. So here is the finished album. So it looks like this. And when you open it up, you have this thing in here. Now, it 
doesn't take up a lot of room, just so you know. That's because you're going to be putting layers of photos inside. So you don't want it to come all the way to the top or when you add the photos or any like mem memorabilia or anything in there or whatever, it's, it's going to make your box not be able to close. So you want to make sure that you don't have it real thick. So then when you pull it out, and we just have this little tab here, it says you're the best. We have like a room for a couple photos on it. We have that little piece there, room for three more photos. Then we have that piece, room for three more photos, that piece, and room for three more photos. It's pretty long. It's not quite, what would it be? 12 times three is 36 inches. It's not quite that. But we are going to use three strips of 12 by 12 paper to do this. So let's take a look at the 12 by 12 designer paper now. I'm going to bring that into the camera so you can see it. This is the designer paper that you can get for free with a $50 purchase. And you get 12 sheets. You get four of each of these three double-sided designs. So I'm showing you the pattern on one side. These two are full sheets of 12 by 12, obviously. And this one I've loved a lot and I've used it up. And then we have the flip side, which is a little bit lighter in color. And again, you get four sheets of each of these for free. So we're going to be using the one with the strips on it. And we've already cut it to size. And I think I've already done the scoring. So let me tell you. So it's three and I'm going to cheat. I'm going to look at my sheet here. Three and a quarter inches tall. And then the scoring, I better score this way first here. The scoring is every two and a quarter inches. Okay, so we have two and a quarter. So if we look at it upside down, two and a quarter, um, four and a half, six and three quarters, nine and 11 and a quarter inches. And you'll do that to each of your three pieces. And then you're going to connect them. So you see how this one's kind of folded this way? So first I have a valley because this one's going to go inside the box. So I have my valley and then I just do an accordion all the way through. But the next one is going to fold the opposite way. So we're going to make a mountain fold first because it's going to connect here. So the mountain fold and then do the accordion back and forth or a fan fold. Some people call this the fan fold. Okay. So then that piece, which is opposite of the other one, will go on next. And then this one will go the same way as the first one. So we'll just go back and forth, back and forth. And actually this last little tab is gonna get folded a different way, but for now we'll just go like that, okay? So two are the same and one is different. And the one that's different, it goes in the middle. Make sense? It's long, isn't it long? <laughs> So now let's do some connecting, but fold. Um, the bone folder is a really handy tool. You can take and emphasize your creases, and because this is designer paper, you can do it kind of all at once. <laughs> I cheat. So just squish the whole thing down, do a nice crisp crease going across. Make sure that your folds are straight, because if they aren't straight, you're going to have an album that doesn't fit in your box. Okay, we'll put these back out and we'll connect. So again, here's our valley. That's the first part of our album that's going to be inside the box. And this tab here needs to connect to this tab. So we're going to add some strong adhesive here. You could use any adhesive of your choice. It could be like the multi-purpose liquid glue. It could be um, the seal. Uh, seal Plus is what I'm using. Now connect it together and before you totally bond it, oops, <laughs> Before you totally bond it, make sure that it lines up. We'll just go like this. We'll connect and then we'll flip this. Oh, Rachel, you're getting this messed up doing it on camera this way. Okay, hang on. We'll just put it down <laughs> and we'll fold the top one over. Yes, it's lined up. <laughs> okay, then you can squish it. Double check. Yep, everything's still lined up. I'm looking at the top edges here, top and bottom. Okay, now this one's going to connect this way. And we want the this portion to be under. So just like the other one was concealed, we want this one to be concealed. We don't want it to go like that. So being careful when we 
connect these. In fact, grid paper sometimes helps too. Rachel took away the grid paper. I'll show you. So if you use grid paper, alignment's super easy. You'll just take and put one piece flat, like that, where you've got the lines of the grid paper kind of holding on, and then the other piece can come in, lining up with those same lines of the grid paper. Like that. Super easy with the grid paper. Ta-da! And there is our little mini album that's going to go inside the box. Before we put it inside the box, we're going to add our photo mats and our little designer paper pieces. Remember this tab? This is the one I told you is going to be a little different. This one's going to fold back. Now you do have a flip side to this album. So that's another reason why if you have it too long, it's not going to fit inside the box, especially if you decide to add more photo mats to the back side, which you could totally do. You could totally do it, <clears throat> excuse me, because if you look again, this mini album, even though it pulls out this way, it's gonna be admired in both directions. So you could totally add more photo spots to that back side. So now we add the photo mats. We're gonna do three black ones. Oh, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Hey, if that ever happens to you guys, by the way, go forward again because you don't want that to get caught up inside. Um, sometimes the black cardstock and more porous cardstock does that to me where you get this, um, you get this little strip of, there we go. Now we got it off. Strip of adhesive that um, kind of frays up the, the cardstock. It's so strong that it grabs on super tight. So you want to have a light touch, which is hard when you're trying to get it going. There we go. A light touch will do it. And I think I can still go back over this. Yes, I did it. Okay, so then you come back in and you add these little guys here. Light touch. I think it was me pressing too hard. Have you guys done that before? <laughs> yes, great for fo um, for Christmas. Um, this would be a, a great um, Father's Day gift, obviously, but Father's Day is far away. My dad's birthday is in November, so I oftentimes think of Father's Day related things in the fall for some reason, um, for that reason. And let's make sure we do it the same way because Rachel likes to have her things match her photos when the blog goes live. Okay, the next one is this one here. So this is the white one. And if you want to, you can use um, temporary adhesives instead because then you can move things around. Maybe you have uh, photos that like certain four will go in order and so you wanna switch where your white pieces will go or maybe you want the whole thing to be photos. Liquid glue, yes. <laughs> yep, and again, I mentioned earlier that you can use whatever adhesive you want. It's your choice on this. Um, I, I would guess that the liquid glue would attach to the black, it totally would, yep. Um, in fact, this, this works really great too. It's just that it's so porous that sometimes it will peel up some of it. It's just the way, the nature of the beast. Um, it's just a super strong adhesive. This is Seal Plus. This isn't the, this isn't the normal um, adhesive, the seal that I normally use. This is the Plus, which is super strong. And I picked it because I wanted the bottom portion to be a strong adhesive because I don't want it coming out of the box, okay? So again, if it gets caught up on your cardstock, don't let that cardstock go up into your cartridge or you're gonna mess up your whole cartridge. You wanna go the opposite way, get it back off the reel, and then put it onto some scrap paper like this to clean it up. Okay. Um, I should have had one of these already done. But you know what? I didn't have enough uh, designer paper. <laughs> so we'll just have to watch Rachel do this. I'm trying to think if there's any other tips I wanted to give you on this. Um, I think that's it. These, uh, the end ones, by the way, are not exactly even. So you're going to see that I went one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three with the black. 
But then on the last two, I just have two black ones. Here's the other one. So that's okay. Now the ribbon comes from a set of three ribbons and they are from the Flowers for Every Season pack. So they come like this. If I can get this one out. They come in a row, a pack of three. Really pretty greens and blues in there. I believe this is just jade. This is misty moonlight. You got some silver in there. So this is a nice woven kind of twine. And then this one here obviously is gingham. We're gonna use just the white because we're making our album just black and white and gray. And I'm just gonna cut kind of a small little piece here. In fact, I think I only needed two inches of it. Oh, you know what? The supplies need a couple pieces of, of ribbon. I think I only put one on there. In fact, this could be even smaller. And we're just gonna attach it to the back as a pull. So I'm gonna use my strong scissors. I've labeled one of my scissors with a ribbon. Can you see that on there? That ribbon scissors never touches paper. It's always ribbon. This one here is my paper scissors. So, um, you know, do that with your scissors too. Mark your scissors. Okay, so we're gonna put just a tad of adhesive back here. We're gonna put these two together like a little sandwich. And then we're gonna do a tad of adhesive again. And this is where maybe the liquid glue wouldn't be a good choice because you don't want it to ooze through. And that just goes on the back like that. You just stick it right back there. Okay, fold it all up. Put adhesive on this back panel. And this is gonna go inside the box. So let's take the bottom of the box and put that together. These boxes are so fast, you guys. Just like that. So this is the bottom. The bo uh, top one has dried. Then when you put it in, make sure that it's going the way you want it to go. You know, um, well, either way, it would, wouldn't be really upside down. But place it in there carefully. There's a little bit of a border, but as long as you have it in there where it fits when it's compacted, you don't even have to worry about the bottom piece looking too even, you know, because it's gonna, it's gonna work. You want it to fit more so than you want that bottom one to be looking even. Now this one here, this here is going to be decorated just a tad more. We're gonna use another little piece of ribbon. So this is where my supplies are wrong. We're going to trim off at an angle, just like we did on our paper. And we'll use about that much. And we're gonna add that right here to the front. I think I'm gonna do that with a little strip of adhesive applied right onto the box. And we'll just add that like that. In fact, I'm gonna angle it. And that's just to hold it in place. The other piece is going to hold it in place even more. Okay, so our For You that we stamped, here it is. We're gonna add that with dimensionals. So you're gonna grab a few little dimensionals back here and we're gonna put those along the back of this strip. Like that. And if we overlap just slightly so that that's coming up, oops, that one's coming off the edge there. If we overlap just slightly so that it's coming up a little bit higher, it's gonna, the um, dimensionals are going to overlap this section here, like that, and it's gonna hold that ribbon super well. Like that. And the last part is just adding the little sequins. So the sequins are ones that I featured last week. They're the Subtle Shimmer Sequins. They're from the Peaceful Place suite of products and they have kind of icy colors to them. Um, there is, let's see here, I'll zoom in on this. 
There are four different colors in that sequin pack. You can see that there's kind of a um, iridescent, um, actually this is pearl, pearl, iridescent, silver, and kind of a flat. What it, <laughs> some of you were joking about how I called it dull before. I didn't mean dull in a negative way, but it's not shiny. <laughs> so kind of, um, I don't know, kind of icy. There's some shine to it if you angle it, but not super shiny like the other ones. So then you can take this little guy, put this on the top of your box. This is the one we just did. Like that. And then you can add your little sequins. Like that. And to do that, what you'll want to do is use um, a glue, like the multi-purpose liquid glue. And you're going to take and you're going to put little dots where you want your sequins to go. And I'm not going to do that on camera because last time <laughs> I had eyeball issues with that. Oh my gosh, that was so hard to separate out, separate out these colors. They are so close to each other. Use your take your pick tool, the gummy end of it, and you're going to grab the ones that you want. And they'll hold on to it on the end. And you can take and apply those sequins right over your little glue dot areas. I'm not doing that on camera again. <laughs> you guys remember if you were with me last week, don't you? That was funny. Not. Okay, scooting this out of the way. And we're going to open up this little guy here so we can kind of see, kind of see these all together. We'll zoom out. That's the finished project. I'm going to bring in the Halloween ones too, just so you can see the... Uh, Oh, here, we'll set that off to the side. <laughs> I'm going to bring in the Halloween one so you can see those tombstone box variations. It's crazy, right? How a tombstone box can turn into something non-related to Halloween. It's just amazing, just by snipping off those little sections and decorating it a little bit differently. Fun. <laughs> we have prizes. So I'm going to bring in the prize from last week. We have a winner from last week that I drew from the after live comments. So if you're commenting um, when the video is done being broadcast live, you get entered into a second drawing. Lucky you. I'm gonna pull this out so you can see that too. Okay, um, so let me bring that in. It's a pack of six by six designer paper, pretty thick. I think I have 40 sheets in here, maybe a little bit more, I don't know. But it's like the equivalent of a 6x6 six six pack of designer paper. And there's a variety of different retired papers in there. Look at the one on the top. <laughs> yes, that coveted berry paper that was so hard to get unless you wanted to purchase an extra stamp set last time. <laughs> so I think there's a couple sheets in there right on the top. But that is the prize for the lucky winner whose name I drew, and I'm going to move some things on my computer. You don't see what I'm doing here, do you? No, you don't. Okay, so we're gonna bring this in. Our lucky winner from last time is Karen Meyer. You were the one that were drawn, you were drawn from the comments from the Afterlives. So congratulations to you, Karen. Uh, I'll be sending this pack of paper to you. And I know who Karen is, so um, I know she lives in the U.S., which is great because we want to make sure that um, you live in the U.S. to get product prizes. Now, if you live outside the U.S., you still can get in on the prize drawing because I have tutorials that can be emailed. So take care of everybody that way. What are the prizes this week? Well, Rachel, the prizes this week, and we'll just shove these little guys off the table now so we can bring in the choices. So there's basically stamp sets galore that you get to pick from. Okay, I think I have it ready. Oops, can't see them all, hang on. Zoom out just a tad. Can see my messy desk though. So I have a few celebration ones in there, a last winter celebration choice in there, and oh, and we've got the winners pulled up. Lori Podraski and, hang on, let me scroll. And Sherry Dugan. <laughs> and we have these for prize choices for you ladies. So congratulations to you. 
you get to pick out which of these stamp sets you want me to send you. If you live outside the US, again, um, let me know and I can send you a tutorial bundle instead. So we have the Berry Blessings, Counting Sheep, Textures and Frames, Feels Like Home. Those are current celebration stamp set picks. And then this is not a stamp, uh, um, celebration pick, uh, but Spiral Die. It's in our annual catalog. Those are your choices, you guys. I hope that you like one of them at least. <laughs> So I think that's it. We are going to go live again next week. Um, I have I have planned out. I don't know it in my head right now, but I know it's on my calendar. I have planned out uh, the next few lives and what projects I'm going to be doing. And so, um, yes, on August 25th, 11 a.m. Central Time, which is kind of like back to school week for a lot of people here in Minnesota, uh, those people will be having a busy week but I'm still going to come on live and share with you. I hope that you enjoy these little breaks away from the news, from stresses in your life, um, you know, just housework, <laughs> your job, your kids, whatever, whatever. Just I hope that you enjoy these breaks. I enjoy pre um, presenting projects to you each week. And so visit me again next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Time. I don't think I need to tell you any more. I think we're good. So I'm going to let you guys all go. And on that note, I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye, everyone.